Hai, this is Ishan. Hai, Maya. And welcome back to the Welcome to the Hubal Show. Where is this made from? Why were you holding? Oh, no, this is an iPhone, by the yeah. way. So where is this made from? Like um, this is made, this is actually a US brand. US. And then we got like uh, Samsung, Korean yeah. brand. Yeah, yeah. Op- Oppo is from Oppo China. Oppo is from China. China, right? Um, the video says that can, can India, India become, become a smart phone? Smartphone super superpower, yeah. which is requested by Indian fans. Indian fans. But, uh, interestingly, um, I've never heard of an Indian brand smartphone. Yeah, 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 have smart, you? Yeah. No, no, no. I so this is gonna be. I think this video is gonna open our eyes a little bit on really yeah. what's happening right now yeah. in India in regards to smartphone, to smartphone industry. Like, no, industry. Yeah. So without any further ado, just gonna check it out. For sponsoring this video. If you're a phone geek like me, you must have noticed it already. India gets many of the coolest phones these days. Really? Just to name a few, Xiaomi and Oppo have both built whole new brands for India with Poco and oh. Realme, and Samsung made their super aggressively priced M series phones here. And not only do these India first offerings put the devices we in the West have to shame in terms of price performance ratios, increasingly they're also made in India. So in the 48th episode of the Story Behind series, let's explore why the Indian smartphone industry has become so competitive and if the company can take this smartphone boom to the next level and become a true smartphone superpower. Poco. Poco, I've never heard of that. A quick note before we start. This video will reference a ton of statistics, government policies, articles. So if you want to explore those yourselves, I've actually linked a ton of sources in the description of this video. So take a look at them. All right, back to the video. India actually already had a brief moment with homegrown smartphone brands a few years ago. Back in 2014, over two thirds of the phones in the country were sold by Indian brands like Micromax, Carbon, Intex, and Lava. And that same year, Micromax actually managed to outsell Samsung for the first time ever and briefly became the largest mobile brand in India. The explosive domestic success didn't last very long though, as just a year later Samsung reclaimed the throne and Chinese brands like Xiaomi, Oppo and Vivo started entering the market. Turns out the Indian brands didn't really stand a chance against this new onslaught, as their whole strategy was just to buy ready-made phones from second and third tier manufacturers in China, stick their logos on them and sell them to consumers in India. Of course, That didn't hold up against brands like Xiaomi and Oppo, who had large R&D facilities, extensive control over their own hardware, as well as deep, deep pockets for their successful operations in China. According to this fantastic article by Gadgets360, when Chinese brands like Oppo entered the market, they initially paid up to $110 per customer acquisition, compared to the $3.2 some local brands were paying at the time. That is an insane 30x increase in marketing spending, even if it was a temporary one. In a similar vein, Xiaomi didn't spend much on marketing, but had no trouble losing money on phones for years in India to build up its brand and to drive competitors out of the market. None of the more simple Indian companies could keep up with either of those, so it is no wonder that by now they have lost ground and only Micromax occasionally makes it into the top five. But in their frenzy to outspend and outcompete each other, these foreign companies quickly realized that in order to win in India, they needed to invest more and more locally. Samsung, Oppo, Xiaomi, and Huawei now all have local R&D facilities in India, even if they're somewhat small, and all major brands now assemble the majority of their phones sold in India domestically. In fact, Samsung has recently opened the largest mobile manufacturing plant in the world by output in India, and Foxconn, the world's largest electronics manufacturer, has opened up multiple factories here, including ones for Xiaomi and even for Apple to assemble some high-end iPhones. These phones, while assembled in India, still use components that are mostly imported, but that's a major step forward nonetheless. So, in a sense, things have kind of come full circle. Instead of Indian companies selling phones made in China though, now it is Chinese and Korean companies selling phones made and to some extent developed in India. That is still far away from India having its own Samsung or its own Mm -hmm. Xiaomi, but it is a significant revival of the industry. So let's take a look at why this revival is happening. 
It starts with macroeconomic factors. India has over time become the second largest smartphone market in the world, and it is the only large one that is growing significantly. All other major regions are suffering declines, so India has become crucially important as a market. At the same time, China, the original factory of the world, is losing its attractiveness as a manufacturing hub. With manufacturing wages having tripled over the last decade or so, environmental and labor rules getting stricter, taxes rising, and the US-China trade war in full swing, companies are more eager than ever to move their factories out of the country. India, together with Vietnam and other Southeast Asian countries, are logical destinations, and indeed, India has recently toppled China to become the largest recipient of foreign direct investment in the world. Seeing the increasing attractiveness of India as both a market and a manufacturing hub, the Indian government has implemented the so-called Make in India strategy. Make in India covers many industries, not just phones, but in this video, we'll just focus on the parts that impact phones. Under the plan, the government simplified taxation and labor regulations, it encouraged infrastructure development, and it made it significantly easier for foreign companies to invest into India. It has introduced the so-called phased manufacturing program, which is a step-by-step -step plan to incentivize phone makers to bring their manufacturing to India. Step one of the program is to first slap import tariffs on finished phones coming into the country, but lat components come in mostly untaxed. Mm. This is supposed to encourage phone brands to assemble their phones Bimba. in India from imported components first. And it seems to have worked very effectively. India has recently become the second largest phone manufacturer in the world after only China. There are now well over 200 manufacturing plants across the country, up from just two a few years ago, and the ratio of imported devices dropped from 78% to below 18%. Step two in the program is slowly implementing import duties on components one by one to also encourage the domestic manufacturing of these individual components, not just the assembly of them. As you can see, the government plans to start with simpler components like chargers and batteries and is planning to add increasingly complex components like microphones, printed circuit boards, camera modules and touchscreens over time. Progress with this step has been made too, but it's slower than expected. According to CounterPoint research, India still imported $13 billion worth of components in 2018, which accounted for 80% of the value of the phones made in India. And domestic components manufacturing is lagging behind the planned output significantly. While the first two stages have seen some success, the third and current stage, which is the most important one as it accounts for 62% of the value of these devices, has seen very little success so far meaning that the more complex components are still mostly imported. The first PCB manufacturing plants in India are already being set up by companies like Vivo, but things are taking longer than expected. Either way, despite being slightly behind schedule, I think the direction is pretty clear. India went from being a completely import-driven phone economy to having a reasonably large manufacturing sector, and there are no signs of a slowdown. In fact, the government has set the goal of manufacturing 500 million phones in 2019, of which it wants to actually export 120 million. Now, I think that's a little optimistic, given that we're pretty deep into 2019 and we haven't seen a lot of exporting activity yet, or at least I couldn't find it, but it is an impressive state nonetheless. Now, the last question is how this smartphone boom will impact Indian companies, because having foreign companies manufacture stuff domestically is, of course, better than nothing, but can't on the long term be a sustainable strategy. I personally think that big homegrown success stories will take a significant amount of time to develop, and I also feel like India might be a little too late to build its own you know, major smartphone brand. This market feels very mature, extremely competitive, and extremely oversaturated already. But there are other areas that we could see promising Indian companies in. In fact, I think the first crop of them have already arrived. Reliance Geo, a gigantic Indian conglomerate, has wiped the floor with competitors in the smart feature phone business, with its homegrown Geo phone line selling tens of millions of units out of nowhere. And while these aren't advanced smartphones per se, they are hugely important for the Indian market. Similarly, Signalchip is the first Indian company to bring microchips to the market. 
They are currently focusing on 4G and 5G modems and microchips for base stations, which are the units that beam radio waves for mobile networks around. And it is still unclear just how good their chips really are, but the fact that an Indian company was able to design and bring something as complex as semiconductors to the market at all is a massive step forward for the country. And as foreign companies bring more and more knowledge and capital into the country, as infrastructure and supply chains get better, I see no reason why similar success stories wouldn't become more common in the future. Success breeds success. And I'm really positive about the outlook of Indian tech companies. One last way I'd like you to think about the rise of Indian tech companies is through this model of technology transfer that I admit I just made up. Let's take a look. Typically, the more complex a technology gets, the more profitable it becomes to make it. Countries and companies typically work their way up this ladder, chasing each other over time. And what we're seeing is India entering at the bottom, taking away some of the low-end assembly work and simple component manufacturing from China. China is moving up this ladder, making better and better phones like the Huawei P30 or the Oppo Reno, for example, squeezing companies like HTC, Sony and LG out of the commodity smartphone business. Korean, Japanese and Taiwanese companies are also trying to move up the ladder, focusing more and more on high-end semiconductors, memory chips, camera sensors and so on. Of course, all of this is kind of an oversimplification, but I think it illustrates quite well how countries and companies have to move up this value chain quickly enough to offset the losses that they see at the bottom end. And it'll be really interesting to see how quickly India can take over parts of China's old business model while China is trying to encroach on those of the others. And uh, talking of encroaching, I've recently spent a ton of time on Curiosity Stream binge watching documentaries like this one, which explains how the first picture of a black hole was taken and how black holes work in general, which is something that every geek should know. You can watch it or. I remember a few years back, I forgot which brand was that. It's either Samsung or iPhone. Remember there was this debate that they want to open up the factory to manufacture in Indonesia, in Indonesia yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, I mean, the government was already okay yeah, with it, yeah. right? And then what happened is the locals uh, was kind of against it. It was Apple, I think. I don't remember. I don't remember which, but I remember it was a big brand. Mm. And they want, uh, they want to open here, right? Yeah. To, you know, to cater to the Indonesian mm. market and stuff like that. And what happened is the Indonesians were afraid the locals uh -huh. because they say you know like they're gonna took our jobs see that's the thing though like we are uh, how do i put it here we are not really quite embracing technology yet technology, yeah. not on okay we are embracing technology on the, the surface the surface level as the final product yeah no no no, no. we are embracing uh, technology uh, on the surface level uh, on the usage value uh, that means like everyone now uses cell phone mm -hmm. everyone now uses android everyone mm -hmm. now uses ios mm -hmm. we know that mm -hmm. but when it comes to developing it yeah. when it comes to manufacturing yeah. it there was like a lot of actually there was quite a good uh, pros, I think, mm, but okay. a lot of the people here, uh, the, the kind of contra, I hope no Indonesians are watching this, no, nobody's gonna kill me. <laughs> a lot of the labor here are uh -huh. kind of against it because uh -huh. they're afraid all these manufacturers, yeah. um, all these uh, big brands yeah. open up the factory, yeah. they're not gonna hire local, local workers. workers. Uh, the expectation are, yeah. not the expectation, the, I think a lot of people perceive that all these big brands are going to bring in like Chinese workers, uh -huh. Korean workers, uh -huh. or maybe you uh, are well, Samsung, or maybe like American, yeah, Chinese, Chinese and usually it's Chinese and Korean Korea, workers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's kind of sad, you know. Like when I watched that video earlier, yeah. it's like kind of that could be Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Can you imagine 500 million cell phones produced in your country? Mm -hmm. That's amazing, man. That's yeah. a lot of workers that could be absorbed in this industry yes i mean i mean it's just amazing what india can do you know like not they don't position themselves as a brand creator yeah. they position themselves as, as the manufacturer manufacturer uh, side or the superconductor and everything yeah. however the one that really um the the, the policy yeah. the trade policy really was like if you uh import the, uh, the, the cell phone in the hole, the you're gonna part, get tax. Yeah, uh -huh. If you import the cell phone, not on the phone, if you import like import the parts, parts yeah, you're not gonna get tax. No tax, yeah. That's kind that's of good. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if only we can. I mean, um, I've, I've said this so many times that right now there's kind of like a, 
a psychological civil war mm-hmm. in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like people are now we are we are kind of like fighting on the ideology that we should live by. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot, some people say we should be in Sharia. Some mm-hmm. people say we should be liberal. We are still fighting in that part. I mean, mm-hmm. I always like I always told you so many times that I wish we can discuss about development. I wish we can discuss on what to do next. You know, mm-hmm. not just like ado ini <laughs> lagi fighting fighting here fighting, fighting here. on the same. Same topics over over. <laughs> so many years. I mean, I'm, every time I see these like yeah. uh, advances that India has made, or Korea, or whatever country that has made, I always think to myself, mm-hmm. that could be us. That could be us. We right? have the same, the same resources. Mm-hmm. We have the same. Yeah, it it could be us. It could be <laughs> us. Anyway, guys, thank you. Thank you I'll see you guys. Bye. Yeah. Satu. Are you still here? They're still watching. Well, thank you so much for watching thank until you so much. till this, the end. Till the end. This second. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. much. Don't forget to while, while you're mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. while you're here, mm-hmm. um, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button. And guys, if you um are looking for advertising, yep. Email us. Email us at humanshow at gmail.com Or even better, mm-hmm. go to our Patreon page. Mm-hmm. We got a lot the of good stuff. The link is on the description. Yeah. You know, we've been doing mm-hmm. this for. Uh-huh. Quite well. Mm-hmm. We've been asking them to do. Mm-hmm. Nobody go to our Patreon page. But maybe after this. Maybe after this. Anyway, guys, as thank always. Thank you for watching. Thank you.